Hey y'all, I just want to talk to y'all for a minute um, about the recent movie, Infinity Wars, uh, for y'all um, that was wondering. Um, it's a part in the movie um, where you, um, you see the Soul Stone and Thanos has to, um, of course, sacrifice Gamora. Now, um, I just wanted to give y'all a quick theory on why I believe that Gamora was actually the Soul Stone, like, embodied, you know. She was like the physical embodiment of the Soul Stone. And that Thanos had claimed that Soul Stone much earlier in the movie, and that he had, he had the Soul Stone in his hands, you know, when he had Gamora. So that's why, you know, if you think about it, um, out of all the children of Thanos, um, the only one he actually loved was Gamora, and because she, she was special. She wasn't special because she was any different than the other ones. She was special because, you know, she was, she was the soul stone, and I don't think he knew it at the time, but it was something about her that uh, made her stand out, and when he claimed her, and took her, then killed half her people, and left the rest, and um, I believe that, you know, he didn't know at the time what he had, but um, I believe her people were the guardians of the soul stone, and I believe that as a child, you know, the spirit of the soul stone, or whatever, however it works, was embodied in the side of her, and um, somehow um, Nebula knew it too. I mean, Nebula... Uh, was always jealous of her because, you know, she wasn't jealous of none of the other ones. You know, she wasn't jealous of Proxima Midnight, who has a husband. You know, she wasn't jealous of, you know, Adonis Ma, who seems to be, like, really close or, like, you know, with Thanos. I mean, it's it's really weird if you just think about the dynamics of the relationship between Nebula and how she seems to be attracted to this particular sister and how she even stated that she hated all of you know her other brothers and sisters you know and you know she just wanted you know she just wanted Gamora's attention and that seems to be Gamora's power you know Star Lord you know he seems to be like you know obsessed with her and all the rest of the guardians you know everybody who seems to come in contact with her just seems to be protective of her and even Thanos you know, he seems to be protective of her, even over anything else, you know, because I, I haven't seen him really be protective over anything. So just to watch him be protective and, you know, I just I just think it's incredible, man. Um, so if you look at it, um, this movie can actually be, you know, her movie. <laughs> I mean, just think about it. Um, she know Thanos the best. I mean, she spent time with Thanos. He opens up to her. He talks to her. And why? Why did he allow her to do things that nobody else could do? You know, she could talk back to him. And I, I believe that deep down inside that he knew something special about her. She was able to do things that he never did stop loving her. I mean, she could betray him or go join the Gal Guardians of the Galaxy and travel the galaxy, fight against them and for his plans. And, you know, he still loves her. You know, he gets mad at other people, you know, get mad at Ronan. You know, you alienated my favorite daughter, you know. And um, this is another plot twist when it comes to Ronan, the accuser. I mean, he plays a part because Nebula feels that, you know, uh, she wants to kill Thanos. And, you know, she can't probably do it herself. So at the beginning, she uses Ronan, you know, because Ronan is the... Um, one who's using an infinity stone and she feels like if he gets the infinity stone then he'll become powerful enough to do his thing, you know, destroy the Nova Corps or whatever, you know, and, you know, go to Xandar. But of course, you know, his next mission was, of course, to go after Thanos. And he said he was going to kill Thanos. And that's exactly what that really wanted. And of course, Gamora is running from Thanos, not because she's afraid of him, but she's running from him because she knows what his ultimate mission is. And she says it in the movie that the only thing that he thinks about is, you know, reducing all the um, pop population of the galaxy to 
you know, half. You know, you want to kill everybody in the universe, half of them. So this is what his plan is, this with one snap of a finger. So she says it, and she knows it because obviously he speaks about it all the time. You know, it's almost like she's just conscious, and um, it's like, you know, she keeps him, she's the only person in all of reality that can actually speak to him really. You know, anybody else who speaks to him really, you know, would die, you know. So everybody else has to, you know, kind of kiss his butt, bow down, you know, you great Daniels or whatever, you know. You see Ronan stand up to him after he gets the Infinity Stone. I mean, but it's just, you know, Thanos is just very, very powerful. Everybody who knows, you know, don't challenge him. But, you know, here's Gamora who knows him probably better than everybody, and she challenges him. Now, at the point where he, she had to, you know, you know, tell him where the actual location of the, you know, soul stone was, I believe that, you know, all of it was a play. You had to look at it, you know. She didn't take him to the location of the soul stone. She took him to the location of where she had to be sacrificed in order to transfer her soul into the stone and change it into the stone, you know, because that's exactly what had to be done, you know, and that's what, you know, Red Skull was saying that, you know, the sacrifice had to be made, you know, you can't just bring her here, you know, <laughs> we gotta toss her in, and that's when Thanos cried and tossed her in, and, you know, that was probably the hardest thing for him to do, because, you know, he did love her, and that was the ultimate sacrifice in order to gain the stone, and, you know, once he gave her up, then that was basically everything to him, and all his other kids died too, pretty much. And I don't think he cared too much about them anyway, because, you know, Nebula's still alive. <laughs> so, you know, and he states at the end, you know, she asked what did it cost, and he said it cost everything. And it was true. He lost everything because when he threw Gamora down to receive the stone in order to complete his mission, then he chose his mission above his love, or above the only thing that he had. And once it was gone, he had nothing. So, yeah. And that was basically it. Um, I believe that G Gamora was actually the soul stone. The Guardians were tasked with the, you know, tasked of guarding the soul stone. And the soul stone was Gamora. And once Thanos got her, and, you know, I believe taking her to that place was the actual place, you know. She didn't resist because, you know, of her sister. You know, Gamora is all about the sacrifice, and, you know, there it is. I believe Gamora was the soul stone, and, you know, now you know why she was important, you know, throughout the Guardians of the Galaxy, why she was important, you know, to Thanos, that even from a child, and they show him holding the child, you know, holding baby Gamora's hand, then they show him holding baby Nebula's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe Proxima Midnight's hand, you know. So, you know, that's just my theory. I believe that Gamora is the soul stone. So I don't think she's dead. I think that she's the actual stone. And once um, the gauntlet is, you know, dismembered or taken apart or once everything's over and the souls are replaced, then, you know, she'll go back to go watching over the soul stone. And in physical form, and the actual, you know, place is, you know, still going to be there. So, you know, we got to keep her alive.